you know, I want to I want to tell you the story about becoming a virtual speaker. Um, and as you heard, I've been a keynote speaker for 20 years, right? And then along came COVID, and we all know what happened to the speaking business. Uh, and so I knew I had to change, but it's a question of what did I want to do? Um, I didn't want to be the terrible webinar guy who has awful slides and terrible narration that you turn off right away. And I didn't want to be that guy in the corner of Zoom, you know, who you can't see and also has terrible slides. <laughs> and I didn't want to be that person who at least had a nice office, but their graphics were a little lame, right? <laughs> I'm sure she's a great speaker, but she needs to upgrade her graphics. Um, and I, I do think our competition is television because here on CNN, you have a different point of view, you have data, you have a lower third that's emphasizing a point, and then you have this crawl that's saying something totally ridiculous, you know, to try to keep you hanging around. Um, so I wanted to be that super cool presenter, um, and I wasn't ready to pay the money for holograms, uh, but I, I really thought I needed to move ahead. And I've always, and Robbie, used graphic slides, uh, but I wanted to show me as well. So the question was, how do you do that? Um, and I needed a studio. So I, I built a studio in my office. It's in the corner of my home office. Um, and here's that picture. And I will share these slides with you at the end so you can see how all this goes together. And it looks super complicated. Uh, it's really not, and you don't have to do everything I did. But, you know, if you want to be Superman, you have to have a green screen. <laughs> and that, that's the way you have to start to be Superman. Because uh, you might want to make a presentation like this, but you might want to make one like this with all kinds of virtual backgrounds. And frankly, you can do that in Zoom, but if you do it without a green screen, it's just not very good. Um, so my initial green screen was this. I'm, actually, I'm using it right now. I've had it for several years for use in video. It's a pull-up green screen. And it's nice because it stores away, but it isn't very wide. And unfortunately, if you're using the camera that's built into your Mac or PC, they're very wide angle. So you end up kind of falling off the edge of the green screen. Um, so I got this one as well. It's called a Valera, uh, a Valera 90. It's 80 inches wide, uh, knocks down pretty small. And that's more than wide enough to really fit any kind of camera. Now they also happen to sell a pop-up one that's, that's better than mine, it's newer. It's only 11 pounds. So you ought to measure and maybe this and it's almost 60 inch wide one can work for you. Now you also have to have good lighting, right? That's really important. And you have to light the green screen. So I watched a YouTube video about this and they said, look, you don't have to spend a lot of money, get some cheap LED shop lights, the kind of thing you'd hang in your garage and a couple of cheap tripods. And you know, maybe this cost me 50 bucks altogether. Um, and I put those lights on the tripods, add a little bracket, and they light the green screen behind me. So the green screen is lit so that I'm separated clearly from the green screen and my image is outlined well. Now, as Robbie said, there's also a hair light, which is uh, kind of a contradiction in terms for me. I don't have any hair, uh, but it does, you can see it shining on my head. Um, and I'm actually using the right hand to point to my head. Um, and, uh, but it gives you definition. So my sh you can see my shoulders, uh, which you couldn't see without a little backlight like that. Now, I also had to, in my case, darken the room because many people use sunlight, but I can't count on sunlight. You know, if a big cloud came over in the middle of a pitch and I went dark, it would be bad. So what I did was I bought some blackout curtains from Amazon and I bought some black pipe at Home Depot and I made enough pipe to hold the curtains and they're just bolted onto a couple pieces of plywood on the floor. Because I didn't want to drill holes in the wall and someday I may take it down. So that allows me to darken it and then, you know, when I'm in my office working, it can, it can be lighter, right? So that can work. Um, now you also have to light you. Uh, and I used to have big lights like this that were incandescent, they were very hot. Um, these are LED lights, and that's important because you can change the color, and I'm gonna grab a remote I don't usually use to show you this. So these lights will change, so I can make them cold, or make them brighter, or I can make them both warm. 
and you can kind of scroll around and because we have different skin tones and different hair tones and so it's good to be able um, to have those lights and they're not hot and that's important I don't have air conditioning up here in Lake Tahoe but I can't keep my windows open because I'm next to a creek <laughs> so I gotta have a cool room now how about the camera now there are tons of cameras out there I go to YouTube, there are all these streamers talking about cameras, and you can find the one that's best for you. I'm using a Sony AX100, that's a $1,500 camera. You don't need one that good. But I do a lot of other video work, so I got a good camera. Now, here's a $700 camera. I, I bought, and then my brother called from Hawaii, and he was out there, couldn't get a camera, he's also a speaker. So I sent this to him. Uh, here's the image he's got with a virtual background. It's good enough. And I'll tell you I, how I know it's good. My brother is a National Geographic photographer. So he takes pictures like this. So he knows cameras and it's good enough for him, right? Now, how about sound? Um, I'm using Rode lavalier mics. Um, I spent about $300 on this one. They're, they're nice because they're rechargeable. They last for seven hours. You don't have to change the battery all the time. Um, but you don't need something this expensive. I was using before this the seventy dollar uh, setup, and it was fine. I just wanted to up the game on sound quality. Uh, and frankly, if you're um, if you're at your desk, which I'm not, I like to stand when I speak. It changes my voice. I get more energy than sitting down. But many people like to sit. You know, get a great mic like a Yeti. I have a Yeti that I use for my audiobooks. Um, there are a lot of different kinds. You can put them on a boom. You can put them on a stand. So get yourself a good mic. Now, how about, how about, whoops, now see, I did the wrong thing. That's the first time today. Let's get myself out of here. Um, how about monitors? Um, I have two monitors in front of me. And why do I have two? Because I want my slides big. So I want to be able to have a downstream monitor that I can really see my slides on. And I want to stand in the right place. So, you know, I want to, I want to be there. Um, and then I, I need to monitor what my audience sees. I need to look at Zoom and it's been interesting because weird people have been popping up here and <laughs> strange things happening. And as Robbie says, you don't know what the producer is gonna do to you. So you need to be looking at that and you need that for Q and A, right? Now also I have the camera right above there so I should be looking at the camera all the time, right? So you might also wanna do some other things. I have a little cell phone stand here. Why do I have that? Well, usually I have my phone there in airplane mode so nobody can call me running Skype. My assistant who's in another state monitors that Zoom in an emergency, let's say my audio's off, she can text me. If I get a text, I know I got to jump on it, right? Um, and a slide remote, of course. So now, let's see if I can get this right again. There we go. Um, also, as I mentioned, I have a seated camera. Um, and a seated monitor that I use, you know, when I'm hanging around, waiting for Q&A. You don't have to do that. That's just extra that I did. Um, now, you also need a mixer or a switcher, and this is pretty important. And that's to put it all together. So you have the green screen, you have the slides, and you want them to end up like this. And you do that by, by running two Macs or two PCs. So one Mac has the presentation, Another Mac has the Zoom software and the, and the switcher software, and then here's the switcher. Now, what does the switcher do? Well, this is called an ATEM mini switcher. There are others. This one I really like. It looks real complicated, and, and it also runs software on your Mac or PC. It's not. You don't have to touch many of these buttons ever. You really need it to get the green screen and the two images together. So what you do is pretty simple. In port one of the mixer, you plug in your presentation Mac. So instead of plugging it into the projector, if you were on stage, you plug it in there. And then in two, you plug in the camera. And then over here is the output. That's USB. You put that in your second PC or, or Mac in a USB port. And think about it. Your remote camera that you have sitting on top of your Mac right now is a USB. So what happens is, these two images are blended, they come into Zoom, and Zoom doesn't know you're even there with a switcher. It just puts the images together. All right, now YouTube can help you set up the green screen. 
this is the thing that the ATEM does. There are great videos out there and you can look at this one later if you download the slides. This guy's really good. He taught me how to do it. Now, is this the only way? No, of course not. And you know, it cost me about what, 1100 bucks to do this and that's with a $300 camera. And of course I have a, a $1,500 camera. But I, I wouldn't get a camera much under $300. Um, the quality goes down quite a bit uh, if you go down there. Although I have a great Logitech camera that thank you Logitech sent me. My, my son is in the game business and he got it for me. Um, but if you're gonna stand up and do this, you need a, a decent camera. But this isn't, um, this isn't the only way. You know, here's a setup that a lot of people use where you're at a desk. And that has some advantages, particularly if, if like Robbie is you're controlling everything yourself. So there are lights and cameras. It's pretty much the same setup. Here's my brother's setup in Hawaii. You can see two Macs, a couple of lights, a green screen and a switcher. And again, he looks like this, which works for the kind of presentations that he does, right? So there are other things you can do. Um, Robbie had a great presentation on Mimo Live. Uh, this is done mostly in software. Uh, so you don't have a switcher here, although some people use them. Uh, you can check that out, watch that great video. You might do it this way. Uh, there's a new product called, I think you'd say, mm-hmm. Uh, this is all software and uh, That's it's supposed to run with Zoom and do some amazing graphics. It's just in beta, I'm on the beta list. You know, we'll see because sometimes Zoom changes and then you can't make it work. Um, additional goodies, uh, this little thing I have in my hands called Stream Deck. It makes me the producer. Uh, initially, I set this up for an assistant. I had my wife help me out here, but it allows me, you know, I can cut myself on and off screen. I can change setups, cameras, I can mute the mic. Um, so it allows me to do this all myself, although I made a mistake today, that happens. Um, and then I have uh, something really stupid, crazy, a foot pedal, which I added because now you have to unmute yourself from Zoom. The producer can't unmute you. So I use that because I'm not near my PC, right? I have to use the foot pedal. So what happens if you put it all together? Let me close by showing you just the kind of presentation I give. So leaders are worried. They're worried because we're in the midst of the biggest business disruption of our lives. And they've already seen the hotel business and the news business and the limo business disrupted and they're worried about what's next. Because guess what? Digital transformation isn't slowing. Executives say during COVID, it's actually accelerating. Speed is amazing. The telephone took 75 years to reach 50 million users. Pokemon Go took 15 days. Think about that, 75 years to 15 days. That's the speed of change today. Now, here's something else I do now since I've gone virtual is interviews because I think they break things up. So let me play you a short interview here. As soon as I, there we go. Surveys are showing that digital transformation is not slowing after COVID-19. In fact, it's accelerating. What are you seeing with IBM customers? And now is beyond adaptation, is how do we emerge stronger from this opportunity? And as you said, everybody is actually looking at um, what are the things that we can accelerate? Um, before, digitizing things was an option for more competitive advantage. In some of these industries, it's becoming the only way you can survive. I'm also doing polling. Now I use um, PolyV. And I do that because again, I'm not controlling Zoom. So I can't really do a Zoom poll. If I have a producer, they can do it. If I'm doing it myself, I can do this. So look, build a studio. It's not that hard. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but the difference in quality will really amaze you.